Hello, my friends. May God bless all of you. And may the Holy Spirit conduct our thoughts and reveal His will for our lives. Pay attention, please. We've been speaking concerning what Jesus said to Nicodemus, which is that he who is born of the flesh is flesh, and he who is born of the Spirit is spirit. So think with me for a moment. When a child is born, then the parents, people in general, friends, those who know the family, they look at that child, that baby, so precious, so perfect, that child that is brand new, right? So everyone looks at that baby and says, oh wow, how beautiful, how wonderful. So everyone loves that child. Everybody wants to see that child because it's something very precious, isn't it? Now pay attention, that child was born of the flesh. It's not because they are cute, wonderful, they have a special smell that they will be like this forever. Not at all. It's just for those days, those weeks, a few months only. But when a person is born of the Holy Spirit, then they are spirit. The nature is divine. Who they are, or as they are born in that moment from God, they will remain for life and throughout eternity. This is wonderful, glorious and eternal. That's why Jesus said that he who is born of the flesh is flesh. And one day will fade away, will rot. Him. By the way, Job said that those who are born of the flesh are like houses of clay. But this is a subject for another day. But they are houses of clay, which means a perishable material that fades. However, those who are born of the Spirit, they are spirit, which means that they are of a divine nature. Those who are born of the Holy Spirit, they become or they start to have God's nature. Do you know what it means to have the nature of God, dear friend? Pay attention, please. Jesus, and to have the nature of God is to have a supernatural nature. This is too strong. Jesus, pay attention, when, when Jesus was born of the Holy Spirit, he was a child of the supernatural because the Holy Spirit is supernatural that acts in the lives of those who believe in the Lord Jesus, in His Holy Son, as their Lord and Savior. But it's not to believe just by acknowledging Him. No, it's by surrendering. To believe is to give, to surrender, to marry, to be joined to Him and to become one with Him in spirit. This is the new birth the birth of the Spirit. This is what the baptism in the Holy Spirit is. When a person receives the baptism in the Holy Spirit, they begin to have the same nature of our Lord Jesus, which is a supernatural nature. In this new nature, which is supernatural, then they will start to live in a supernatural way. Jesus lived in a supernatural way. Jesus was born in a supernatural way, lived in a supernatural way, died in a supernatural way, resurrected in a supernatural way, 
in order for us to also his followers his followers those who marry him those who are aligned with him they may also have his nature a supernatural nature and this is too glorious which means that Jesus the nature of Jesus which is supernatural is what he does he gives he he is the one who gives us the Holy Spirit. He is the one who baptizes people in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit doesn't baptize anybody. The Holy Spirit is the supernatural, is God in spirit, which the God Son gives with the permission of the God Father to those who believe in Him. So when we and now in the campaign, for example, in order to receive the Holy Spirit, to be born of the Holy Spirit, and to be born of the Holy Spirit, to be Spirit, is for the person to have this spiritual nature. And pay attention. If you can understand well what I'm saying here, it's because you are already born of the Spirit. But if you can't understand, you 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 get you are even more doubtful. As I explain this, and you're saying, Bishop, I can't understand it. Then, once you receive the Holy Spirit, you will understand, because the Holy Spirit Himself, when we receive Him, He Himself convinces us. He gives us an assurance, a supernatural conviction. It's not something natural, not at all. What is natural is for those who are natural. It's for the natural world, the fleshly world. But the spiritual things are for those who are supernatural. Pay attention. Now that you have this understanding, this understanding that when the person receives the Holy Spirit, they become supernatural. They have a new heart, they have new thoughts, new vision. They become supernatural. So that's why I said one of these days that when a person is born of the Holy Spirit, when they are born of the supernatural, they are like an ET. They are not from this world anymore. How wonderful, isn't it? And that's why the Apostle Paul teaches, guided by the Holy Spirit, led by the supernatural, he said like this, that those who live according to the flesh, meaning those who are born of the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. So, for example, a person who hasn't been born from the supernatural, from the Holy Spirit, their goals, their objectives, their future is projected upon the natural things. So I want to buy my house, I want to graduate, I want to be a good professional, I want to make money, I want to travel the world, I want to do this and do that. So they only think of the natural things. Why? Because they are born of the flesh. But those who are born of the Holy Spirit, these have different ambitions. For example, let me speak again concerning my case, myself, a personal experience I had. I don't have any personal ambition in what regards the natural things. My ambition is spiritual, is supernatural. I want to save souls. But a person who is natural, that has the fleshly nature, will be like, oh, how does Bishop want to save souls? Save souls. Oh, I, I, I don't get it. It's too vague. Well, you don't understand because you are still of the flesh. You are not born of the Holy Spirit. You are not born from the supernatural. But those who have already been born of the supernatural, which is the Holy Spirit, they have this vision of what it means to gain souls. 
to those who are born of the Spirit, to gain souls means the following, to save people from this hellish world we live in and to save the souls of those who are going to hell. As it's the case of the testimony of this young lady, Tainan, you perhaps have already watched it here, that we posted yesterday. She was about to die, she was going to hell. However, there was a work of the Holy Spirit with a supernatural direction so that this young lady could as well become supernatural and see how she is today. So you see who Tainan was and who she is today, completely different. Which means that the Holy Spirit does what he has to do and is showing the results. That's what's happening in the Universal Church. So Paul says, look, those who are according to the flesh, they have their mind set on the things of the flesh and it's normal. It's normal. I understand well the dreams, the desires, the personal projects that everything concerns the things of this world, the natural things, the things of the flesh. But those who are born of the Holy Spirit, those who live according to the Spirit, their mind is inclined towards the things of the Spirit. And what is the will of the Holy Spirit? What is the will of the supernatural? The will of the supernatural Spirit of God is to come upon those who are natural and to turn them into new creation. Also supernatural beings. That's the truth. Why? He says, for to be carnally minded is death. The child is born perfect, wonderful, beautiful, smells really nice, but was born to die. But when a person is born of the Holy Spirit, they are born to live at peace, to have eternal life and eternal peace. They are born to live a supernatural life. And once they leave the house of clay, the house of clay, then they are received in heaven by the Father who regenerated them into life-giving spirit. That's how it happens. So, Paul even comes to the point of saying that the carnal mind is enmity against God, which means that those who are inclined towards the flesh, they obviously show that they are against God because they are only thinking of a mediocre life of 50, 60, 100 years old if they get this far just a period, a short period of time that passes away like the wind. So when people are inclined towards the flesh, they are inclined against the will of God. It's enmity against God. For they are not subject to the law of God. They are not subject to the will of God because they want to satisfy their flesh. Well, you are seeing there the series Kings, and you are seeing how Bathsheba did what she did in order to attract King David. And King David did what he did in order to hide his sin and had to kill his most faithful servant, soldier, Uriah. Which means you clearly see, you clearly see in this series Kings, you can see the image, the type of the Lord Jesus there, because Uriah was a type of the Lord Jesus. 
and David a type of the world, a type of Israel, of the world unfair, cruel, that in order to satisfy his flesh, his desires, to try and hide his sin, his nakedness, he sent a servant to death. And that's what the world did with Jesus. That's what the world does to Jesus up until today. Those who do not want to obey the word of God, they are doing the same thing with Jesus as though he was here on earth. That's the truth. Jesus was innocent, died in his innocence, as we've seen, as we are seen in the case of Uriah. He died as an innocent man. Because of this, he was sacrificed because of the purity of his faith, because of his sincerity, because of his love. Bathsheba as well is a representation of the world. Uriah loved his wife, but his wife was fleshly, so it couldn't work. A spirit with flesh doesn't get along. It's either flesh or spirit. If it's flesh, it will die. It will incline towards evil. If it's a spirit, it will live for eternity. So the carnal mind is enmity against God. Yes, because it's not subject to the law of God, to God's principles. It's not subject to God's holiness and His righteousness. It's not subject to God's discipline. It's not subject to anything that comes from God. Why? Because it's focused, it's obsessed, their mind, their desires in their own projects and desires. And that's why these people suffer, they groan, they really suffer. This is very strong. So then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. David was in the flesh. And he stopped being the righteous, correct man who was clean in order to become what he became for a certain period of his life. But he repented. He found repentance because of his heart, which was sincere. But he suffered until death. Since the day he committed that sin, he lived the rest of his days groaning, groaning, groaning out of pain. Even after having been forgiven, he suffered the consequences because his children bent over backwards to make his life bitter. Anyway, you are going to see this in the series Kings later on. But the truth is that as long as the person is flesh, they can be in the church, they can be a tither, they can be a faithful offering giver, be charitable, they can bend over backwards. But if they were not born of God, they continue to be flesh. Deep down, deep down in their heart, they continue to be flesh and they will perish unless they are transformed by the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God transformed into a new creation, into life-giving spirit and also become a supernatural person just as his holy son, Jesus Christ, our Lord was. Amen. Praise God. We are going to speak more about this at 9.30 a.m. If you want to participate, Esther and I will be together here on TV speaking about this subject, okay? May God bless you all. And tomorrow, no, I won't remind you. If the Holy Spirit doesn't remind you, I won't say anything else. May God bless you all in Jesus' name. Amen.